Lord. Can y'all make some noise out there this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're glad to be here, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I'm glad to be here to give God some praise, to give him some worship, and to hear a word from him today. I need it. I need it. Psalms 149 says, praise the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Praise him in the assembly of the saints. Let Israel rejoice in him, their maker. Let Zion's children triumph and be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in chorus and choir and with the dance. Let them sing praises to him with the tambourine and the lyre. Verse 4 says, For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the humble with salvation and adorn the wretched with victory. Let the saints be joyful. Are y'all joyful this morning? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let the saints be joyful in the glory and beauty of the Lord. Let them sing for joy upon their beds. Hallelujah. So your praise should have started before you got here. I said your praise should have started before you got here, when you woke up this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands, everybody. Hail Jesus, you're my king. Hail Jesus, you're my king. Your life frees me to sing. Your life frees me to sing. I will praise you all my day. I will praise you all my day. Perfect in all your ways. Perfect in all your ways. Hail Jesus, you're my king. Hail Jesus, you're my king. Your life frees me to sing. Your life frees me to sing. I will praise you all my day. I will praise you all my day. Perfect in all your ways. Perfect in all your ways. Hail Jesus, you're my Lord. Hail Jesus, you're my Lord. I will obey your word. I will obey your word. I want to see your kingdom come. I want to see your kingdom come. Not my will, but yours be done. Not my will, but yours be done. Glory, glory to the Lamb. Glory, glory to the Lamb. You will take us into the land. You will take us into the land. We will conquer in your name. We will conquer in your name. And proclaim that Jesus reigns. And proclaim that Jesus reigns. We will conquer in your name. We will conquer in your name. And proclaim that Jesus reigns. And proclaim that Jesus reigns. Hail, hail, light of Judah. Hail, hail, light of Judah. How wonderful you are. How wonderful you are. Hail, hail, light of Judah. Hail, hail, light of Judah. How powerful you are. How powerful you are. Hail, hail, light of Judah. Hail, hail, light of Judah. How wonderful you are. Jesus, you're my king. Hail Jesus, you're my king. Your life frees me to sing. Your life frees me to sing. I will praise you all my day. I will praise you all my day. Perfect in all your ways. Perfect in all your ways. Hail Jesus, you're my Lord. Hail Jesus, you're my Lord. I will obey your word. Yeah. I will obey your word. Want to see your kingdom come? Want to see your kingdom come? Not my will, but yours be done. Not my will, but yours be done. I want to see your kingdom 
are wonderful. You're powerful. You're excellent, God. Hallelujah. You're mighty. Hallelujah. Mighty to save. Mighty to heal. Mighty to deliver. And we give you praise. He's a way maker. He's a promise keeper. He's the light in darkness. And he's worthy of our praise today. Hallelujah. He is here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. He is here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. He is here. He is here, moving in our midst, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. He is here. He is here, working, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. He is here. He is here, moving in our midst, moving in our midst. Yes, he is. I worship you, Lord. I worship you. He is here. He is here, working in this place, working in this place. Uh, this place. I worship you. I worship you. He is here. He is here. Touching every heart, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. He is here. He is here. Healing every heart, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. Waymaker. Waymaker. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, he's a waymaker. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. He's a way maker, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. He is here. He is here. Turning lives around. Turning lives around. I worship I worship. He's here mending, mending. He is here mending, mending every heart. I worship you. I worship you. Waymaker. Waymaker. Miracle worker. Promise keeper. Light in the darkness. My God. That is who you Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, he's a waymaker. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who Wipe away all tears. You wipe away all tears. You 
You mend the broken heart. You're the answer. You're the answer to it all. Jesus. You wipe. You wipe away our tears. You mend the broken heart. You're the answer to it all. In the darkness, my God, that is who you are. He's the way maker, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you, you are. You wipe away, you wipe away all tears. You mend the broken heart. You're the answer to it all. He's the answer. Jesus, you wipe away all tears. You mend the broken heart. You're the answer to it all. Jesus. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Hallelujah. Waymaker, miracle worker. Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Hey! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That's who you are, God. We praise you because of who you are. You're a way maker. You're a promise keeper. You're the answer to it all. You're the answer to it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo. Is there a witness in the house? We got to let the world know that Jesus is the answer. Not cocaine, not weed. Jesus is not alcohol. Jesus is not sex. Jesus is the answer. Not power, not money, not greed, but Jesus is the answer. Not hatred, but Jesus is the answer. He'll wipe away all tears. He'll mend the broken heart. He's the answer to it all. Jesus. He'll wipe away all tears. He'll mend the broken heart. He's the answer to it all. Jesus. He'll wipe away all tears. He'll mend the broken heart. He's the answer to it all. Jesus. He'll wipe away all tears. He'll mend the broken heart. He's the answer to it all. One more time. Jesus. He'll wipe away all tears. He'll mend the broken heart. He's the answer to it all. I'm a witness. Jesus. He'll wipe away all tears. He'll mend the broken heart. He's the answer to it all. Jesus. Waymaker. Waymaker. Miracle worker. Promise keeper. Light in the darkness. My God. That is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the 
today brand new brand new mercy I need it <laughs> he'll come down into your situation if you worship him you gotta send up Judah first you gotta send up your praise first y'all you gotta do that first in advance in faith in anticipation of a miracle. Somebody need a miracle today? Anybody, 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 anybody? Need God to work something out for you? Anybody in the house? Hey, Woo! You gotta come expecting. You gotta come anticipating. You gotta come in joy. Hell all around you. And you in here praising and dancing and singing. The devil can't handle that. He cannot handle that. You got to learn. You got to learn. You got to learn how to fight fire with fire. Can we praise God for the fire choir this morning? We are on fire! We might be small in number, but we're mighty in God. <laughs> and I invite any of you parents out there to bring your children to rehearsal. Bring them. It's the Thursday before the fourth Sunday. Bring your kids. Yeah. They want to participate. Yeah. Bring them. Mackenzie, Aria, Mason, Kiara, bring them. Sammy. Yeah. 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 Noah and Donald, they said, she said they'll be here next month. <laughs> Co what's his name right there? Kareem. Tell your grandmama to bring you to rehearsal. Bring them, bring them, bring them. Madison. Maddie. That's Madison. Mackenzie. Bring them, bring them to rehearsal. Amen. They can't get here if you don't bring them. They can't get here if y'all don't bring them. And they want to serve God. We got to train them. We have to train them. Amen. We're going to sing our welcome song. We'll be back. We want to welcome each other this morning. Greet one another. We're glad you're here. Glad to see you today. It's been a long week. We want to speak blessings on your life. I'm so glad you're here today. May God's blessings come your way. 
May you feel this warm embrace as we worship in this place. No matter what you're going through, God is here for you. So believe me when I say, I'm so glad you're here today. I'm so glad you're here today. May God's blessings come your way. May you feel this warm embrace as we worship in this place. No matter God is here for you. So believe me when I say, I'm so glad you're here today. I'm so glad you're here today. May God's blessings come your way. May you feel this warm embrace as we worship in this place. No matter what you're going through, God is here for you. So believe me when I say, I'm so glad you're here today. I'm so glad you're here today. May God's blessings come your way. May you feel this warm embrace as we worship in this place. No matter what you're going through, God's I'm so glad you're here today. I'm so glad you're here today. 
So believe me when I say I'm so glad you're here today. Amen. Let's receive our pastor. Praise God. Well, good morning and praise the Lord. Good morning. Seems like there's some happy people in the room. Amen. Happy Amen. People. We thank God for his goodness, for his grace, and for his mercy. We thank God for the gift of this day. Amen. We thank God for all of you who are here to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, with us on this beautiful Sunday morning. Amen. We are, uh, we want you to know if you're visiting, if you're worshiping with us for the very first time and you did not receive a welcome packet, if you would raise your hands, our sanctuary support team will ensure that you receive a welcome packet. All right. Okay, we want to bring to your attention a few things. Uh, next Sunday, if we live in the Lord will, next Sunday is our Family and Friends Sunday. Amen. So we want you to make an extra effort to invite your family and friends to come and worship with us next Sunday. Now, there will be free coffee at 930 and the fresh fruit frenzy after dismissal. We'd like for you to use your outreach cards to invite others to worship with you. Also, if we live in the Lord will, our healthy living classes begin this Tuesday at 6 p.m. in the multi-purpose room. Praise the Lord for healthy living. <laughs> All right. If you have not already signed up, please do so at table two in the south. In the front, welcome, Cove. All right, you're quite welcome. All right. Um, the next thing we have, uh, we have the Women's Ministry Floral Fundraiser. We want you to please visit table one and two after dismissal. All right. We also, after dismissal, we have a lit young adults meeting. All right, y'all lit. Uh, what the, y'all got to give me something, um, because I, you know, I can get off the top of my head with what lit means. I can, I can say leaders in training. <laughs> yeah, you, uh, you know, because that, that's just how I flow. I don't know. <laughs> so we can change that lit from what the world say, and we can say leaders in training. Amen. Amen. Copyright that. Boom, got it. All right. <laughs> Amen. That's right, because that's what they are. The young people are leaders in training, and we got to lead them. Huh? We got to lead them primarily by example. Hmm? Got, don't get quiet. We got to lead them by example. And then our speech, and we have to let our speech match what we're living before them. Amen? Because they study us. Okay, all right. So we got the leaders in training, young adults meeting. <laughs> In the, mul in the multi-purpose room after dismissal. All right. We're happy to uh, bring to our attention that um, last Sunday, uh, by the grace of God and your cooperation, we, uh, for the week ending April 15th, we achieved 100% of our weekly goal. <laughs> so we give God praise for that. Amen. Amen. We are so thankful to the Lord when he blesses us in our cooperation with him to uh, achieve our financial goals because it helps us to do the things that we believe the Lord has placed in our hearts and in our minds to do in this part of his ministry because this is the Lord's ministry. This is uh, his house. This is his kingdom. Amen. And we just want to be good partners with the Lord working together as the Lord will lead us and guide us to further advance the kingdom of God. And we couldn't do that without your financial support, so we appreciate that. Amen? And we're still believing God that we are going to finish 
that remaining 14,000 square feet of undeveloped area. Amen? <laughs> and we will be able, we will be able to continue to serve God by serving others in the community and win souls to the kingdom of God. Uh, we want to just say thank, thank you to all those who participated in our monthly food giveaway. Amen. We want to give a special shout out to Brother Henry. Amen. Anderson, he came through with a big crew. Amen. He came through with a big crew, and we just want to say thank you to Brother Henry and his crew. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to continue our worship, and we're going to worship the Lord in our giving. <laughs> Amen. Amen. If you're giving today in your tithing, if you're giving in your offering by way of check, please make your check payable to Home Assembly Church, Home Assembly Church. If you're giving by electronic means, if you would exit the double doors, turn to your left, or exit those doors and turn to your right, someone will meet you there at the Welcome Cove to receive your gifts electronically. As is our custom, we ask those who are willing and able, if you wouldn't mind standing with us this morning and hold your gifts that you're going to give to the Lord in one hand. And on the back of our church bulletin, we have our church unity prayer. In reading this prayer, we're asking God's continued blessings upon what we're giving back to him. Amen. Let us begin. For this cause, we bow our knees unto you, our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that you would grant us according to the riches of your glory, that our church be strengthened with might by your spirit in our inner man, that you, Christ, would dwell in our hearts by faith, that we, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and that we would know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that we might be filled with all the goodness of God. Now unto you who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto you be glory in this church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. For this cause also we do not cease to pray for our church and desire that we might be filled with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that we might walk worthy of you, Lord, unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of you, strengthened with all might according to your glorious power unto all patience and longsuffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto you, Father, which have made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into your kingdom, Jesus. For it is in you we have redemption through your blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Furthermore, because the promises of God are true and our latter will be greater than our past, in unity, we declare that our church property will be 100% completed in God's perfect time and will be within budget according to his perfect will. In unity, we declare that our church will be a beacon in the community to draw souls to Christ and that our hearts will be ready and open to welcome all, allowing God to get all glory for it is he that has made it so. Father, we thank you for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you for your provision, for providing everything that we have need of. And Father, in our act of corporate obedient worship, we bring our gifts to you. We bring our tithing. We bring our offering to you, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, for meeting all of our needs. We're thanking you in advance, Lord God, that you will bless our assembly to continue to meet all of our obligations and responsibilities. And we pray a special blessing on those who are consistent financial supporters of this ministry. Let your blessings overtake and surround them that they might have everything that they need and even a surplus that they'll be able to give to those uh, that you put on their path that have need. Father, receive our tithing, receive our offering. Let our gifts come up before you this morning as a sweet smell and savor. And we want you to be pleased with our tithing and our offering. We ask and receive this now in faith 
And we're thanking you for answering our prayer in advance. In Jesus' name, amen. You'd be so kind as to follow the directions of our sanctuary support team from the rear. Look at our beautiful helpers we have this morning. Hold on, choir, just a moment. But we have uh, a fire starter that's going to do some, give us what God has given her. And then we'll have the fire choir come back. Amen? Let us receive at this time Sister Danielle Merriweather. We need a microphone for her. Amen. Good morning. Morning. <laughs> Every time I come up here and I'm asked to speak, I never really know what to say. <laughs> I always speak full ten, which 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 is what you're supposed to do. Ask God, what are, what are you to say? Because I don't want to be up here um, for myself. I just want to be up here to be able to have the Lord's will to be done. And so in asking God the question of what he wanted me to say, I felt that he wanted me to talk about my trip that I went to last month. As many of you all know, I went to Cape Town, South Africa for, for a mission trip. And I want to leave you all with three lessons that I learned while I was on my trip. Um, so the trip, I went with an org organization called Brave by Faith Travels, and the organizer of the trip started this um, organization for like-minded Christian women to be able to come together and travel across the country. And instead of just sightseeing and just touring, what was special about the Cape Town, South Africa trip was it was mission-based as we were able to work with the Hillsong Foundation and be able to go into some of the townships and disadvantaged communities um, while in Cape Town, South Africa. So upon arrival, one of the first places that we had the opportunity to attend was a mountaintop called Signal Hill. And there, me along with the 11 other young ladies, we were there and we introduced ourselves. And after introducing ourselves, we were given the opportunity to just be by ourselves and talk to the Lord. And at this time, the wind was um, really blowing. And by the time I went to talk to the Lord and be my, my, by myself, the winds got extremely strong. But I really wasn't alarmed because the wind, it just felt like God's presence. And I wasn't 
falling over to the side, but I was just standing firm in the wind. And in the midst of that, I can hear God telling me to trust him. Um, I can hear him telling me not to focus on the wind and the things in the wind, because a lot of times when we focus on other things such as stress and worry and fear, we ourselves get caught up in the wind. And he just told me to just stand firm and just trust in him and that um, when I do that, everything will be okay. The next lesson I learned, I was get, given an opportunity to go kayaking. And many of you all might know I don't know how to swim. And so kayaking, even with a life jacket on, was really terrifying for me, a terrifying experience. But I faced my fear and I ended up doing it anyways. Um, and so in the kayaking experience, it was a two-person boat. It was me and another young lady. And we were given the tool, which was just basically a paddle. Um, on our way to the destination, um, I admit that I did complain a little bit about how long the trip was going to, t going to last because I was just completely terrified of the water. But I realized that when I focus on the task and getting to the destination at hand, that's when fear left. But when I focus on the water, that's when fear was able to creep back up. Um, and so my, the group that, my boat, we were lagging a little. And so because we were lagging a little, there were three professional boat riders. And so one of them saw that we were lagging, and so he attached us to his boat. And in attaching us to his boat, we were able to get to our destination rather quickly. So we got to our destination, and then it was time to go back to our original location. And on the way back, it was extremely crazy because the winds were blowing out of control. The waves were getting crazy. Um, water was getting in my face. Water was getting in the boat. And once again, one of the professionals, he attached us to his boat, and we were able to get to the destination um, safe and sound. But in, the, in being attached to, to the professional's boat, I still had to do my part and paddle. I just couldn't let him um, do all the work because I, too, had to be active in the process. And in that moment, God, he taught me that, um, that number one, I have to, to – take a leap of faith and step out and face my fears. And when I do that, he will give me the tools. He'll, he will supply me with the tools that I need to, to succeed. Because in those areas in which I am weak, he is the one that makes me strong. And he is the one that will come to my rescue and give me that extra pick-me-up to be able to help me along the way. And I just can't sit back. I have to also be active in the process. And the final lesson that I learned so it was a mission-based trip. And so I was coming to Cape Town, South Africa to give something. And what I gave was I gave my time. And so I gave my time. And mainly we worked with um, a lot of the kids, kids in some of the townships and a lot of the disadvantaged areas. But the kids were just so happy and so thrilled, despite their situations that they were going through, to be able to just um, play with us. We gave them hugs. We gave them words of encouragement. And one thing that I did not do was analyze the kids' predicaments that they were in. I was just there to be able to show God's love and his, his love. And the Lord told me that there may be some times where he may ask of me to, to give. And in giving, in the times he asked me, I may be, it may be an uncomfortable situation um, it may be a time where I don't want to give up my time and talent freely, but my job is to be obedient um, to giving whatever he's asking me um, to do. For example, you might see a homeless person on the street, and God might tell you to give them some money. We might come up with an excuse, oh, I don't want to give the money because they might use the money for drugs or for something that you might not condone. But the Lord told me that... Um, it's not always our business to be in their business. It's our business to be obedient and be about our father's business. And so those are the three lessons that I learned. And, and, and to recap, the first lesson I learned was despite everything that 
may be going on in your life or happening around you to just trust in God. Um, in areas in where you are weak, he makes you strong. And in giving, it's not our business to know all of the details are being other people's business. It's our business to be obedient and to be about our father's business. Thank you. Wonderful. Amen. We praise God for those words. And um, there's a song that I was going to hold until after the fire choir sang, but with those words that God gave to our dear sister, I think we should listen to the words of this song. So, Booth, go ahead and fire it up, and then the fire choir will come after. All right.
What's in the way? We got to make room. Pastor Elaine told me to go ahead and preach, so that's what I'm going to do. Amen. But those, those words mean something. What we place or what can, if we allow it to, take the first place that God deserves. Got to move it over. Amen. All right. We're going to be learning that song <laughs> and get it in our spirit. Amen. Amen. All right, let me see. Uh, I want to encourage somebody today. Is that all right? And as I was thinking, this is still under the theme of progressing in the process. And, uh, but I want to let someone know today that you can make it. I just came to tell somebody that you can make it. And uh, I got some scripture that will help us to remember the fact that we can make it. In fact, it's not in my notes, but it came to my mind that we are already sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. All right? So you know that you can make it. Despite what uh, you may be presented with, despite the conditions and the situations that we migrate through, and despite what the enemy tries to do to discourage us, and despite what sometimes our human reasoning uh, will try to make us depressed, we have the word of God that said he will never leave us 
neither will he forsake us. Uh, sometimes we know intellectually that God hasn't left us, but sometimes, if truth be told, in certain situations we may feel forsaken. But I'm glad that God has put in his word that he will never leave us, neither will he forsake us. So it is with this thought that we attempt, thank you, to share the word of the Lord as it is found in 2 Peter chapter number 1. 2 Peter chapter number 1. Amen. Just as a way of free advertising, the young man, for those who don't know, who sang that song is Jonathan McReynolds. And I encourage you, I'm not getting a dime, but I encourage you, if you want some good music, get Jonathan McReynolds. Listen to the lyrics. The lyrics are critical. Amen? All right. Second Peter chapter number 1, verse number 1. Simon Peter, I have the Amplified Version. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle, special messenger of Jesus Christ, to those who have received, obtained, an equal privilege of like precious faith with ourselves in and through the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So he lets us know who he's writing to and who he is uh, sending this letter to. It's to those of us who have obtained like precious faith uh, and uh, the faith that we have uh, it is, in fact, precious uh, because it costs Jesus everything to secure this faith. It cost him uh, service. It cost him uh, offering up his life. Uh, scripture lets us know, I believe, uh, in Hebrews that it's not possible that the blood of bulls and goats can take away sins. Uh, we were bought with the price and the price that bought and purchased our salvation is the precious blood of Jesus Christ. So Peter reminds us that uh, this faith that we have obtained because of our hearing of the gospel message, this faith that we have obtained because we obeyed the gospel message, this faith is precious. This faith is to be protected. This faith is to be defended. This faith is to be guarded because it is of high value. Verse 2, he says, may grace, God's favor and peace, which is perfect well-being, all necessary good, all spiritual prosperity and freedom from fears and agitating passions and moral conflicts be multiplied to you in the full, personal, precise, and correct knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. So he's praying that we would receive this peace and that we would receive it in its fullness. Uh, he wants us to be free from fear. Uh, God doesn't want us to walk around fearful. Uh, he doesn't watch, want us to walk around fretting, but he, he says he wants well-being to be given unto you. He wants uh, all the necessary good and all spiritual prosperity. Uh, he wants that to be ours, and it, and it will come uh, through the full, personal, and precise and correct knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. So that means uh, as we continue to progress in the process of knowing more about Jesus and knowing more uh, about what we have in him, then that should bring on a, a certain amount of peace in our hearts. That should bring on a, a certain amount of peace in our minds. And this is the grace of God that has been so freely given to us. Then he goes on to verse number three and says, for his divine power has bestowed upon us all things that are requisite and suited 
to life and godliness. So here he lets us know, uh, firstly, that everything that we need, everything that we need to continue to walk by faith, everything that we need to continue to make progress in this process of sanctification has already been given to us through the divine power of God. And what is the divine power of God? We know it is God himself. So when we receive the Emmanuel, when we receive God in us, when we receive the outpouring and the infilling of the Holy Ghost, we receive that divine power. And because we have that divine power, there is no doubt that you can make it. So if you have the power, then you can make it. And just in case you don't have the power yet, as soon as you get it, you're going to go right into the you can make it category. Uh, so I don't want you to be fearful. I don't want you to be unbelieving. So whether you're not quite in yet, uh, then this applies to you. You can make it uh, and you will make it uh, as soon as you receive uh, the divine power of God. For his divine power, God's power, not ours, but God's divine power has been bestowed, has been given upon has been bestowed upon us all things uh, that are requisite, that are required uh, to life and godliness. When we get the divine power of God, then we got everything that we need if we follow that power, if we lean uh, not to our own understanding, but if we are led by the divine power, which is the Spirit of God. He said he has given that unto us uh, through the full personal knowledge of him, who called us and to who called us by excuse me who called us by and to his own glory and excellence and virtue so god called us it was his glory that called us it was his glory uh he called us when we were in our sins he called us when we really didn't know him he called us uh, out of the I can't help it uh, to put us in the place of uh, yes I can. He called us uh, uh, out uh, of sin and shame and, and called us into and called us by his own glory and by his own excellence uh, and by his own virtue. And not only did he call us by that, he when he called us and we accepted the call, he gave us some precious things. Uh, Verse number four says, by means of these, uh, he has bestowed, there's that bestowing again, he has bestowed on us his precious and exceeding great promises. God has some great and precious and exceeding promises for us. Uh, listen, uh, he has some promises for us on this side uh, of eternity, and he got some show enough promises for us uh, on the other side of eternity, he has bestowed upon us his precious and exceeding great promises so that through them, through what? Through the promises of God, so that through them you may escape by flight. Ah, glory. You might escape by flight from the moral decay. God has called us out of darkness into this marvelous light. We are children of light. We once were children of darkness. We once were the very enemies of God. But thank God for this glorious call. Thank God for the power of his spirit. Thank God that we have some great and exceeding promises. It, even Jesus in his ministry was given some promises even to those uh, that he was teaching those that were following him, his uh, disciples and his apostles and those uh, that were coming to him to receive salvation, those that were coming to him to receive instruction. Uh, I hear Jesus in his ministry saying, let not your hearts be troubled. Uh, you believe in God, uh, believe also in me, because Jesus understood uh, uh, that 
the people uh, who were from the Jewish tradition, they, they had a little difficulty uh, uh, putting their hope and, and putting their confidence in the man, Christ Jesus, because they were looking for a king. They were looking for a redeemer that would come with great power and great authority. But Jesus came low. Jesus came humbly. And Jesus came teaching. Jesus came uh, and he was uh, healing the sick. He was raising the dead. He was casting out devils. He was associated with sinners. And so he and uh, I didn't come to call the righteous uh, to repentance, but I come uh, and call to call sinners uh, to repentance. So while they were criticizing Jesus, uh, Jesus was doing ministry. So even in our uh, ministry, we're going to be criticized, uh, but that's okay. Let the criticizers talk. Uh, let them criticize all they want uh, as long as we know that we're doing what God has given us to do. Uh, they're going to talk. Uh, but I hear God said in one place, uh, he prepares a, ta a table before me in the presence uh, of my enemy. So listen, let them criticize but when it's time for you to feast uh, with the Lord, that they're going to be onlookers. Uh, glory. Hallelujah. So listen, we have to understand uh, that by the means of these precious promises uh, that we can escape. We will escape by flight from the moral decay, from the rottenness and the corruption that is in the world because of covetousness, lust, and greed. And we are become sharers and partakers of the divine nature of God. I'm so glad that we have the divine nature of God. I'm so glad that we're not locked in in sin. Uh, aren't you glad uh, that you don't have to deal with the I can't help it uh, anymore? Aren't you glad uh, that greater is he that is in you uh, than he uh, that is in the world? Uh, so the next time uh, the enemy tries to plant a thought uh, of doubt in your head uh, as it concerns what God uh, has for you, uh, as it concerns uh, your life and your production, uh, you let that rascal know uh, that I can uh, do all things through Christ that gives me the strength. Uh, you let that devil know uh, according to the word of God. Uh, wait, you got to, first of all, you got to know what God has said uh, in his word uh, because if you don't know, then he can trick you. Uh, he can fool you. Uh, he can make you stumble and stop you dead uh, in your tracks. Uh, but I hear God declare in his word uh, that we, uh, we are more than conquerors uh, through him that loved us. Uh, so the next time uh, he tries to tell you, you ain't going to get over this or, or you're not coming out of this. Uh, you have to let the devil know, I didn't go. Uh, listen, uh, if you got the showing up Holy Ghost, uh, you got to let them know uh, I didn't come in this by myself. Uh, you thought uh, I might have been by myself, uh, but just like God uh, was in uh, that fire uh, with them three Hebrew boys, uh, God is with me right now. See, you might not have seen her. Uh, uh, Jesus come in, uh, but I brought him in with me uh, because I got filled with the Spirit. Uh, so while you're looking at one body, you got two you got to deal with, uh, and greater is he that is in me. So you got to let that devil know, yes, uh, I might be in a trial, uh, I might be in a situation, uh, but there's something in me. Wait a minute, uh, let me fix that. Uh, there's someone uh, in me, uh, and the one in me is God himself. Uh, there's the one in me is the Almighty God. Uh, so the the one in me. He saw the test before he brought it to me or before he allowed me to go through it. And since God brought me to it, he can tone up, take me through it. And so you got to tell the devil in the midst of a test. See, listen, you don't need courage when you're out of the test, but you need courage in the midst of that fire. You need courage to let the devil know I don't care what happens if I live or if I die, I'm still a winner. Because because I got that same spirit uh, that raised up Christ uh, from the dead. And since it dwells in me, uh, it's going to also quicken. Uh, it's that means make alive uh, my mortal body. Uh, listen, uh, go ahead and do what you want to do uh, to this flesh. Because uh, I'm going to get a new body anyway. Uh, because flesh and blood uh, cannot inherit uh, the kingdom of God. Uh, listen, uh, and if you keep messing with me, devil, uh, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to put my faith uh, on another level, because I hear God declare, they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So mess with me if you will. I'll go in my closet and lay hands on myself and declare what God has declared with his stripes. We are healed. 
Yes, I can. Uh, yes, I can. Uh, I can speak uh, deliverance uh, over my own mind. Uh, sometimes my mind gets carried away. Uh, I, I can, and I don't have time uh, to call for nobody else. Uh, but the power of God uh, is already resident in you. Uh, and if it's already resident in you, uh, you might not can get to the church house per se. Uh, but the church uh, is the body of Jesus Christ. Uh, so all you got to do uh, is put your faith uh, in action uh, and stand uh, on God. God's Word. Uh, put your hands uh, on yourself uh, and say in the name uh, of Jesus, uh, I declare that God didn't give me a spirit of fear, uh, but he gave me a sound mind. Uh, he gave me wisdom. Uh, I will not uh, lose my mind. Uh, I will not go crazy. Sometimes uh, you got to stand, uh, not sometimes, uh, all the time. You got to stand uh, on God's Word. Uh, let God be true uh, and every man a liar. Put your hand, listen, put your hand on whatever is ailing you. Wait a minute. Don't you realize that you are a royal priesthood? Don't you realize that you are a holy nation? All you got to do is put your faith there and say, God, in the name of Jesus, this shoulder has been giving me problems, and I ain't told nobody about it. But in the name of Jesus, in the name of the one who shown up is Jehovah Rapha, he is the Lord that healeth thee. I declare my my healing, I declare my atonement in the name of Jesus. Yes, you can. You can make it. These are precious promises, and they're not to be taken lightly. These are the promises of God. Uh, so, we didn't have, so we shouldn't be have to worry about the moral decay, the rottenness and the corruption that's in the world. Yeah, the world's corrupt because that's all they know. That shouldn't surprise us, but we have been delivered out of that foolishness. Thank God for deliverance. Then he moves now. I'm moving now to 1 John chapter number 4. Uh, 1 John chapter number 4. Uh, see, the devil tried to bluff some of us. The devil tried to strong arm some of us. The devil tried to bogart some of us. Say, oh, you ain't going to do it. You ain't going to make it. It ain't going to work for you. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. God ain't hearing you. Yes, he is. The fact that you keep trying to tell me, you must know that God's really trying to hear me. huh? Because if he wasn't, you wouldn't be aggravating me. So get behind me, Satan. You can make it. Tell yourself you can make it. Yes, you can. You can make it. You can make it. You can make it. First John 4 and 4, little children, you are of God. You belong to him. That's why you can make it. <laughs> you belong to God. You see that? And have, uh oh, oh, and have already defeated and overcome them, the agents of the Antichrist, so all them demons. Huh. Uh, oh, I'm trying to help somebody. I'm trying to help somebody. I'm trying to help somebody. Uh, somebody might be having nightmares. Mm, can't get a good night's sleep. Uh, first of all, stop worrying about everything. Stop worrying about everything. Uh, you got so much worry that you can't even sleep well. But I hear God declare something in his word. Be anxious for nothing, but in prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known unto God. So take that worry off. Don't you walk out of here with no more worry anymore. God wants you to have a good night's sleep. Huh? And you ain't got to take no medicine uh, to have a good night's sleep. Uh, you ain't got to be drugged up and nogged out uh, uh, to get a good night's sleep. Uh, you cast your cares, that's what he said, cast your cares uh, upon the Lord uh, because he cares for you. Uh, so everything that you used to worry about, give it to God. He said, uh, little children, you are of God. You belong to him. Isn't he a good father? Huh? Doesn't he know what we need? Doesn't he know what we're facing? So give it to him. We belong to God. We're not our own. 
We don't operate like the world operates. You belong to God. You belong to him. And have already, who you already won. You ain't got to go to no playoffs. You already the champion. Glory. Hallelujah. You already defeated and overcome them, the agents of the Antichrist. Talk about demons. You already defeated them. Because he who lives in you is greater, mightier than he who is in the world. See, uh, that's why, that's why, that's why you got to make sure that you have the Holy Ghost and he's living, not just visiting. Oh, glory. Uh, uh, some of us want Jesus to visit every now and then. Uh, during holidays. Uh, but Jesus, I don't want you to visit. I want you to live. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that he li Aren't you glad that he lives in you? Ooh. And if he hasn't moved in yet, make room. Oh, glory. Uh, if he hasn't moved in yet, he wants to move in today. Uh, he wants to move that sign off your heart that says vacancy. Uh, and don't you dare let the devil put a for room for rent. Uh, no, 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 no. Not in your heart. Uh, we ain't rent, I ain't written out no rooms to nobody. Jesus is the builder of the house. And since he's the builder of the house, since since he is the architect of, of our faith, uh, then he needs to live uh, in this building. Uh, uh, he ain't leasing. Uh-uh. No, he ain't leasing to buy. No, I want Jesus in here as a permanent resident. How about you? That's what we got when we got the Holy Ghost, y'all. Uh, no more. We ain't written no more space to the devil in our heart. Uh, evict that rascal. Uh, you don't need a three-day notice. Get him out right now. Get them out right now. Uh, so, so, so now I got to jump now to 1 Corinthians chapter number 10. 1 Corinthians chapter number 10. Oh, glory. You can make it. I, I want to encourage you. You can make it. You can make it. You, this ain't going to drag you down. You ain't going down for the last time. You know, you said somebody drowning. They go down the third time. They ain't coming back. Uh-uh, you ain't drowning. mm mm mm, -mm. God will give you power to walk on the water of that situation. Just like he told Peter, he said, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. Said, come on. Mm -hmm. Come on. God wants you to exercise that type of faith. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter number 10, verse number 13. For no temptation, no trial regarding as enticing to sin, no matter how it comes or where it leads, has overtaken you and laid hold on you. That is not common to man. So don't you let the devil trip you out and think, oh, ain't nobody going through this. You're the only one. He's a liar. He's a liar. See, here's another reason why we need to fellowship together. Huh? Because we can get strength from one another. Huh? So, so. Shameless plug. So come to church. Oh, glory. All right, y'all here? All right, that's all right. That's just for those who, who may not come. I had to put that in there. Ah, uh, he says, he says, for no temptation, no trial regarding as enticing to sin, no matter how it comes or where it leads, has overtaken you and laid hold on you that is not common to man. That is, no temptation or trial has come to you that is beyond human resistance. And that is not adjusted and adapted belonging to human experience such and such as man can bear. So he's saying, look, you can resist the temptation. Well, I just can help it. Uh-uh, uh-uh, don't put that on God. Uh, you can help it. You, you want it to do whatever you chose to do. You, you, the psalm said, I make room for what I want. Uh-huh, uh-huh, so you made room for that. But God is faithful. Look at that. God is faithful to his word and to his compassionate nature. Look at the compassion of God. And he can be trusted. You can trust God on this. He can be trusted not to let you be tempted and tried and assayed and measured or weighed beyond your ability and strength of resistance and power to endure. Oh, that just took away my whole bag. I had a bag that, that I was stashing of excuses. Uh, I had a bag that I was holding in reserve of excuses. Lord, you don't know. Uh, uh, I just couldn't, I just couldn't, uh-uh, 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 no, 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 
No, God has already given us the ability. He's given us the strength of resistance and the power to endure. Huh? But with the temptation, he will always, oh, always also provide the way out, the means of escaping to a landing place. God wants to put you in a landing place. He wants to put you on some solid ground. On Christ, they sang, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. So when the temptation comes, God is not saying that while we live on this side of eternity, we will not be tempted. Because I hear the Bible said that Jesus himself, uh, he was tempted in all points, uh, like as we are, yet without sin. Uh, so what we have to do uh, is when we get tempted, uh, we can't rely on our own uh, human reasoning. We can't rely on our own uh, human thinking. We got to rely on the power of God uh, that's in us. Uh, and he said God will always make a way of escape. He said he'll always do it. So yet we, got, we can't say I couldn't help it. What we have to say if we fall to the temptation is I didn't take the way of escape that God provided. Just be real with God. But I came to tell somebody you can make it. You can make it. You can move away from that temptation. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Oh, you can make it. Uh, you need to tell yourself, uh, you need to get this message in your mind and in your heart because you're going to face some things right after dismissal. Mm? You're going to face some things right after dismissal. Huh? It might start in your family. It might start where you work. It might start on your block. But whatever, you can make it. Ah, we don't got to bow to the pressure of sin. We don't have to bow to the pressure of the world. We don't have to bow to unfair pressure. We don't have to bow. But that you may be capable uh -oh, and strong and powerful to bear up under it patiently. Oh, oh, okay, all right. So here's the participation part. Put your hand on yourself and say, I am capable. I am strong. I am powerful to bear up under any temptation patiently. Ooh, did you know that you had all that? Uh, I just want to remind you. I just want to remind you. Uh, so, Hebrews tells us, do not therefore, I'm in Hebrews 10, 35 now, do not therefore fling away your fearless confidence. For it carries a great and glorious recompense of reward. See, our confidence has to be in God, not in ourselves, not in what we can think of, not in what we can manufacture, not in how we can talk to, you know, some of our close, close people, you know, and get some, get some worldly advice. Child, if I was you, uh-uh, you ain't me. <laughs> you ain't me. Uh-uh, <laughs> and you ain't in me. <laughs> God's in me. <laughs> so I can't take your child advice. Man, if I was you, no, man, you ain't me. <laughs> but the man Christ Jesus is in me, <laughs> and I can't listen to your half-hearted, uh, 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 skewed uh, worldly advice. If you ain't going to tell me what God says, uh, you can miss me with that. Because mm? I'm going to make it. All right, we need to change the message. To, I can, you can make it say, I am going to make it. <laughs> if we take heed to this, huh? if we take heed to this, huh? so do not keep your, keep your confidence in God. Huh? Don't put your confidence in the arm of the flesh. No flesh. Do not therefore fling away your fearless confidence, for it carries a great and glorious compensation of reward, for you have need of steadfast patience. See, we want stuff to be over like that. But God said, no, you're going to have to wait a while. <laughs> oh, glory. Uh, see, that's why we know it's a process. Huh? This ain't no microwave salvation. 
this ain't no microwave. Uh, this is a slow cooker, if you will. This is crock pot salvation. Glory. <laughs> Y'all know about a crock pot? Huh? Well, you put everything in there. Huh? Uh, you put the chicken in there. You put the rice in there. You put the vegetables in there. You plug that rascal in and turn that dial and wait a good while. Uh, but when that meal is done, Ooh, glory. Everybody can eat, huh? Uh, uh, because there's something that God, I don't know uh, the uh, 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 mechanics of the crock pot, but somehow the food is cooked and it ain't burnt. Sometimes it, when the timer is up, everything's ready. What's God trying to say? He got you in his crock pot. Mm -hmm. And he has a time limit to all your tests. Uh, he has a time limit to all your situations. Uh, he has a time limit to all your circumstances. Uh, and you all crying because the time ain't up yet. Mm -hmm. But when God says it's over, guess what? Guess what's going to happen to you? Ah, you're going to come forth as pure gold. Ah, uh, yes, you are. You're going to come. Listen, let God do what he wants to do. Uh, uh oh, he wants, he wants the juices of his character to get all on you. Woo! He wants the flavor of his glory to get down to, between the bones and the marrow. Uh, woo! So when he looks at you, when he takes a whiff of your life, you smell just like him. No moral decay, no wickedness, no sin, no ungodliness. God wants to put, keep you in that pro, uh, in that pot, and every once in a while, he'll take the top off. <laughs> yes, he will, because that's what we do, too. <laughs> we take the top off and look at the, mm, and we get the dance. Ooh, this is going to be good when it's done. It's going to be good when it's done. Huh? That's what God is saying. He said, Ooh, you're going to be good when I'm done. <laughs> Ooh, you're going to be good. When, you're going to look just like me when I'm done. <laughs> you're going to act just like me when I'm done. <laughs> you're going to act just uh, like I want you to act. You're going to go where I want. I remember what you said before you got in the pot. Uh, you said, I'll go where you want me to go. Yeah, we said that, uh, but we didn't know that the heat was going to get turned up uh, on our life. Uh, but God said, you stay in there and stew a while. <laughs> you stay in there uh, uh, and let the full flavor packet of my glorious salvation to get all in you. Woo! Woo! God said, oh, Lord, I don't know why I'm talking about a crock pot, but y'all understand what I'm saying. God's cooking up something for your life. God has a master plan for your life. He puts a, uh-oh, wait a minute, don't forget the seasoning. Glory. Hallelujah. God will put some, he said, get some red onions. Oh, glory. Get some red onions and put them in there. Ooh, glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is something else. Uh, 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 oh, wait a minute. Some of us can't take too much salt. Uh, so God said, put a little dash in there. Ooh, glory. Uh, put a little dash. Uh, put some adobe in there. Glory. Hallelujah. And let it, and, and, uh, you ain't even got to stir a crock pot. Uh, just lay it in there. God said, what you stirring for? Huh? I got you where I want you. Huh? Just be still and know that I'm God. You ain't got to stir up nothing. You can make it. Because God's working on us. Stay in the crock pot. And when the timer go off, oh, glory. I can, can you, uh, if you allow me just to use my mind, y'all pray for my mind. But I can imagine, I can imagine God, I can imagine God just saying, ooh, when they come out, ooh, they going to be something. Uh, this is my bride I'm talking about. Uh, he's talking about us. Uh, we're the bride of Christ, uh, and he's making us ready. So there's some things, uh, there, listen. If you eat raw chicken, you might get salmonella. Hmm? Huh? So there's some things that only heat will make dissipate. Huh? Huh? You, want, you don't want to eat no raw chicken. Uh -uh, but you want it to be well done and have the juices flowing. That's, oh, oh well, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Well done. That's what we want to hear him say. Well done. 
Ooh, glory. God, you, you see how God putting this thing together? <laughs> we ought to make a cookbook, y'all. Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, stay in the crock pot of God until the timer goes off. Mm -hmm. Now watch, uh oh, <laughs> I done left my notes, uh, so I gotta, <laughs> well, I depend on God anyway. But anyway, here we go. Your timer might not be my timer. Hmm? So don't look cockeyed, cross eyed, and crazy at me, because I'm still under the timer. Huh? You just pray with me, you just pray for me, and I'm gonna do the same thing for you. But there's one big timer that we all waiting to see go off. I remember he said, you're going to escape by flight. That's the rapture. When that timer hits the zero, it's done. I can hear God saying, come, my people. So you have need of patience. We have need of patience. Stay in the crock pot. Oh, I'm so glad he don't barbecue grill us. Ah, uh, because if we were barbecued, that, that flame would, would burn some of us up. I know y'all hungry now. Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, but you get the message. God's trying to tell us you can make it. Huh? He ain't going uh, to put you on a grill. He's going to put you in the crock pot. And there's safety in that pot because they're made out of some strong material. Huh? Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so what are you saying? Uh, we're safe in Jesus. Uh, uh, he protects us. Uh, he's our covering. Uh, he's our wall of surrounding. Uh, he knows. Uh, he knows uh, just how to cook our life uh, and prepare our life uh, in such a manner that we can give glory to him. You can make it. Stay in the pot. You can make it. You can make it. And sometimes he puts some of us in the same pot together. Oh, glory. Glory. So the rice can't say to the vegetables, what y'all doing in here? Uh, 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 cooking. What you doing? I'm cooking. Uh, who's doing the cooking? Not me. I'm being cooked. Uh, 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 uh. There's some things that God is working out of me. Oh, so the, so the heat, and, and it's something about it. You know, it's a steady heat. Huh? It's a steady, it's a, it's a progression, and then it knows how to turn, God knows how to turn the heat down when it's time to let you simmer. Oh, ooh. Let you see. Somebody might be in a simmer season right now. Huh? Things ain't popping off like you thought they would pop off. God just might have you simmering. Mm, don't worry. Don't get out the pot. You're going to be all right. You're going to taste good to God in a minute. Huh? Well, I'm just simmering. Ain't nothing going on in my life. Simmer. Simmer. <laughs> ain't nothing. The Lord. And, uh, you stay in there. Stay, just, just simmer a while. Simmer a while. <laughs> Everybody going out to eat after this, huh? Glory. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> Glory. Uh, but that's just where my mind went. But I believe I'm trying to get you to see this message here. Mm. You got to pray for me because God will give me some stuff that I'm like, uh oh, well, here I go. But let me get back to the scripture for those that are watching my live stream. Where is he going? All right. We, we're all right. You can make it. You can make it. You can make it. So don't, do not therefore fling away. I got to stop, y'all, in a minute. Wow, time is gone. Do not therefore fling away your fearless confidence, for it carries a, a great recompense of reward. All right? Ooh, ooh. Verse 37, for still a little while, hmm? a very little while, and the coming one will come, and he will not delay. So God's coming. He's coming to your situation. He's coming to your circumstance. He ain't going to delay. Where's Sister Ludi at? Where? You know, he, he, she, he's an on-time God. <laughs> yes, he is. Uh, he may not. Uh-oh, I'm going to borrow your song just for a moment. He may not come when you want him, but he's always right. Okay. So you can make it. The fact that God's on time, you can make it. Oh, Lord. And all of this is because of the divine power that has been bestowed upon us. So if you're in, stay in. And if you're not quite in yet, he took the top off the crock pot 
so he can add you to the recipe. Ooh, glory. Uh, you, uh oh, uh -oh, uh oh, you just might be the seasoning that we need uh, to fulfill the meal. Uh, you, you just might be. Uh, yeah, you ain't got the Holy Ghost yet, but you're the seasoning. Uh, the God wants to put you in the pot to see the, so you can, you can get the Holy Ghost. Huh? Uh, uh. Okay, so where's the, where's the pot? Here it is right here. Here it is right here. Uh, the pot's here. Uh, uh, so you are the ingredients. Uh, I wish I could just hand pick you and just help God out. Put an apron on and help God out. Huh? And walk down there and say, you know, uh, uh, come on, come on. And see, the ingredients on the shelf, don't, they don't buck. Huh? Huh? When the last time an onion said, don't you put that knife on me? Uh-uh. Huh? Huh? But when you go pick up the ingredients, it does what it says. Huh? You, you put it in the pot. God wants to add you into this pot this morning. He wants to add you into the pot. Hmm? So, you can make it. Who wants to get in the pot? Come on, altar workers. Come on, altar workers. Come on, come on altar workers. God's cooking something. He ain't finished. He ain't finished. Uh, there's some ingredients that need to get in the pot. Mm. There's some individuals that need to get in this pot. Mm. Huh? And get the full flavor of God. Uh-oh, the favor and the flavor of God. That's what you need. You, God is showing you favor so you can get the flavor. Huh? He's, hmm, he's giving you time so you can make up your mind. Huh? So if you're here, I want to encourage you that you can make it. Hmm? You can make it. Huh? You can make it. But you got to make an effort. Huh? You got to make an effort. You got to be in, in the location so the chef can just put his hands on you and say, oh, yeah, that looks good. Oh, yeah, this is going to turn out real good. Oh, yeah, let me get some of that. You know how you have a spice rack? And it, so God wants to pull you off the spice rack and make sure you get intact and impacted by the Holy Ghost. So God's saying, yeah, okay, I want him, I want her. Yeah, all right, yeah, I'm a, yeah I want him, I want her and him, and give me him too. Uh, a little this, a little that. So if you're here this morning and you have not yet received the gift of the Holy Ghost, guess what? You can make it. God's here for you. The Holy Ghost is already here. All you got to do is believe and receive. Believe it and receive yeah, it. Amen. Huh? Believe it and receive it. Now, you, you all who are real cooks, because I'm not, does anything ever boil in a crock pot? No? Just simmers. Is there any, any bubbling in a crock pot at all? Huh? All right. Does the, does the top on the crock pot ever, you know how to, do -do 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 -do? huh? Flutter. Sometimes, no. Where the real cook that? I don't know. All right. Does it do that sometimes? All right. So, 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 so that means then there's a, there's a certain sound. If you're sitting in another room, huh, and the, and the, and the pot begins to flutter, huh, you can hear it all the way in the other room. Huh? So where, where, where? Where Jesus. am I going with this? Thank you, Jesus. When you receive the Holy Ghost, there's going to be a sound. There will be a sound. Huh? That we can hear it in this room there'll be a sound. and any other room. Huh? The scripture says they were all filled with the Holy Ghost mm, mm, mm. and began to speak with there's other tongues uh, uh, as the Spirit gave them the utterance. Huh? So, 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 so that means that when I come to receive the Holy Ghost, that means I'm going to abandon all the other ingre ingredients that are on the shelves. Yes. For my illustration, this, all these rows are shelves now. All right? But I'm going to disregard every other ingredient on the shelf, and I'm going to come to the altar. Right? And I'm going to be fluttering before I get here. 
Huh? What, what do you mean fluttering? I'm going to be offering up praise That's right, before I get to the altar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, I, when I get up out of my seat, uh, I'm going to have one of the loudest voices in here. Yeah, and I'm going, to be, I'm going to be praising God on my way Amen. to the altar. And it just could happen uh, if my line. sincere praise and faith uh, connects with the Spirit of God, uh, I can get filled with the Holy Ghost before I reach the Amen. minister. Amen. You got to have that kind of faith. Believe it. Got to have that. You can make it. Jesus, you can I make love it. it. You can make it. So if you're here you and you haven't been filled with the Holy Ghost yet, I this is a golden opportunity for you to if receive you the divine there, power of God, which was freely given Jesus, to the church. Are you here? Come on. Because you care. We want to wait with you. We want to encourage you. We I want to imagine. praise the Lord with you. We want to see you come through. Amen. All right, I got the sign off on the live stream. Jesus, I love We are the Apostolic Faith Home Assembly Church located in the beautiful city because of Los Angeles, care. California. We are so happy that you spent your time to live stream our worship service today. We want to encourage you that you can make it. God has a plan for your life. And the greatest plan Jesus for your life is for you to accept the plan of salvation. Because if we live and the Lord will, we will see you on Wednesday for our Bible study. There's a number on your screen for the next 15 minutes. If you have a prayer request, call that number on the screen and we will have a prayer counselor standing Jesus by to take your prayer request. God bless you. We'll see you. On because Wednesday, if we live in the Lord will. I could this is a great day for somebody to get the Holy Ghost. If you this is a great day for somebody.